May 22, 2010. Airliner Boeing 737-8HG of Air India Express operated scheduled flight 9812 on the route Dubai Mangalore. There were 166 people on board the aircraft, 160 passengers and 6 crew members. The aircraft was flown by an experienced crew. Its composition was as follows. Captain, 55-year-old Zlatko Glushika. Very experienced pilot, 10,215 flight hours. Co-pilot, 40-year-old Harbinder S. Alawalia. Four flight attendants worked in the cabin. On May 21, 2010, the Boeing 737-8HG operated scheduled flight 9811 from Mangalore to Dubai. The flight landed at Dubai Airport at 2344. After refueling and maintenance, the liner was supposed to perform a return flight 9812 from Dubai to Mangalore. 160 passengers boarded the aircraft. Nine more passengers who had already booked seats did not arrive on the flight for unknown reasons. On May 22nd at 106 hours, Flight 9812 took off from Mangalore and reached FL 370 at 37,073 feet. The flight passed without incident. All this time, the co-pilot was flying the aircraft, and he also negotiated with the air traffic control services since the captain slept for almost the entire flight for one hour and 40 minutes. Mangalore Airport is located on an elevated area and is one of the 10 most dangerous airports in India. According to the decision of the State Aviation Committee of India, takeoff and landing at Mangalore Airport should be performed only by the crew captain. At the time of this flight, Captain Glashitsa made 16 takeoffs and landings at Mangalore Airport and knew the airport well. At 129 miles from Mangalore Airport, the co-pilot contacted the air traffic controller of the control point and requested permission to descend to 6,889 feet, but was denied, as another aircraft was at this height at that time. At 5.46 hours, the air traffic controller cleared Flight 812 to descend to 6,889 feet. At 5.47, Flight 812 began its descent. The liner at that moment was 77 miles from Mangalore Airport. The weather conditions for landing were favorable. Visibility was more than 3 miles. The wind was moderate, and no precipitation was observed. During the descent, the pre-landing control chart was read out by the captain only partially and much later than required by the established approach standards. At 5.50 hours, while 50 miles from the airport, Flight 812 crossed FL 295 29,527 feet. Despite the descent and the precise implementation of the instructions of the air traffic controller, the liner came in for a landing above the normal glide path. The captain decided to accelerate the descent when he realized that Flight 812 was much higher than necessary. To this end, he extended the landing gear and set the flaps to 40 degrees, but the liner continued to land almost twice above the glide path. The crew of Flight 812 received clearance from air traffic control to land and began a standard approach system, ILS, on runway 24. The weather conditions were normal. The latest communications between the crew and the air traffic controller showed no alarm or panic in the voice of the co-pilot. The co-pilot was concerned that the liner was too high, and he suggested to the captain to abort the approach and go around, but the captain continued to descend, being above the normal trajectory. The co-pilot repeated that it was necessary to go around, to which the captain exclaimed, Oh my god! Turned off the autopilot and increased the rate of descent to 38 knots. Terrain, terrain. Pull up, pull this up. caused the GPWS signal sync rate, and pull up, climb and high risk of collision with the ground. At 605 hours, flight 9812 touched down 5,249 feet from the threshold of runway 24, which was 8,031 feet long, skidded off the runway, rammed a 295 foot sand bank, cut off the ILS radio beacon with its right wing and rolled into a 787 foot deep gully at the end of takeoff. Mangalore Airport Runway Rolling down the slope, 
the liner broke in two and kerosene splashed out of its damaged fuel tanks, causing a huge fire. In the first seconds after the crash, several passengers managed to get out of the crashed plane through broken windows. The surviving passengers went for help to the locals, who were at the crash site before the rescue services. Later, 15 fire engines, 20 ambulances, and about 100 rescue workers arrived. Nine injured passengers were hospitalized. One passenger died from his injuries on the way to the hospital. 150 employees of the Central Industrial Security Force Organization were involved in the search and rescue operation. On the first day, the bodies of 87 dead were recovered from the rubble and their remains were sent for identification by relatives. In total, 158 people died in the crash, all six crew members and 152 passengers, most of them died from severe burns. The surviving eight passengers, seven Indian citizens and the only Bangladeshi citizen were injured to varying degrees. The investigation into the causes of the crash of Flight 9812 was conducted by the State Aviation Committee of India with the participation of the Airports Authority of India. The parametric recorder was found on May 23rd, the speech recorder on May 25th. The final report of the investigation was published on October 31st, 2010. According to the report, the main cause of the accident was the erroneous actions of the crew captain despite the comments of the co-pilot and the sounding GPWS signals, he continued the approach and attempted to go around after landing on the runway. The contact with RWY-24 occurred 5,249 feet from its start and the liner did not have enough remaining distance of 2,782 feet for normal braking. The study of the wreckage of the liner showed that at the time of the disaster, the oars of both engines were in the full throttle position. Already on the run of the aircraft along the runway, the captain suddenly made an attempt to go around and switched the oars to takeoff mode, which only aggravated the situation. Voice recorder interpretation showed that the co-pilot noticed the captain's error and recommended a go-around while the plane was still two miles from the runway. This behavior of the captain could be caused by the fact that he slept during the one hour and 40 minutes of the flight and, after waking up, probably could not quickly concentrate and understand the non-standard situation. Also, the disaster was influenced by additional factors. Lack of monitoring radar MSSR at Mangalore Airport, which caused air traffic control to make a mistake and allow the crew of Flight 812 to descend a little later than necessary. In this regard, the aircraft followed the landing much higher than the normal glide path. Lack of active actions by the co-pilot, who discovered the captain's mistake in time, but did not take active measures to eliminate it. The location of Mangalore Airport on high ground, surrounded by a ravine, which to a certain extent complicated the landing approach.